Hi guys, today I had a new Sadako player come into my chat while I was streaming asking a beta. Now this happens a fair amount, probably because when I do videos I try to tailor both to veteran and newer Sadakos alike, and I ended up doing a match where I tried to narrate everything I did and why I did it, and thought it would be helpful for some others, so this video is going to be just that much. There won't be any memes or any editing of the sort, just raw gameplay, so if you're a veteran Sadako, you will probably know everything discussed in the video. Also ignore the build, this was one I was trying out because they changed Dragon's Grip on the PTB. I'll be doing a separate video on it because it actually worked pretty well outside of this game because I was so concentrated on trying to help the person understand the thought process that I wasn't actually paying attention to the build for the most part. If you are a veteran player though and can think of other tips that I missed out in this video just chuck them in the comment section try and help other new Sadako players improve. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope it helps somebody. This is like a, this is a meme build because I'm on the PTB at the moment and they've like changed these. One one thing you've got to remember as Sadako is it's very important to not tunnel vision on someone. You can see it in the portrait. And to know how much they have, you have to kind of track it as you play. I'll try and describe it as I'm playing, but I'm also like thinking about all of this while playing it. So it's kind of hard to fully keep track. What I should have done really is gone back in the VOD and gone to a match I played earlier. Red ring is their fully condemned. If they're red ring, that means they've got seven stacks and you can instantly kill them. If... They're, if they've got a black ring, that means they don't have any stacks of Condemn. And if they have a grey ring, that means they've got at least one stack of Condemn. And you can tell if they have a tape by looking at the portrait. So if you look inside the portrait now, I don't know how well it's going to work with the bitrate and such. It, it's like clear. And then if they grab a tape, it will have like VHS scan lines on it. Don't, don't run this build, by the way. At least not on live. If we teleport, we look at the portraits. Alright, see, Nancy's gone grey on the other side. That means she's got a stack of condemn. I don't know, she's near one of the TVs. I don't have the add ons to uh, know exactly which one. She just got another stack there. And then she just got another stack, and then um, Lara got one. So now it's Nancy's at three stacks, Nancy's at four stacks. Lara's at two. Nancy's at five stacks. Nancy's at sub. If I teleport one more time, Nancy's condemnable. Lara's at four, and I think also she might be. Um... Not that one, it's a different one. So Nancy's gonna wanna try and grab a tape, so we wanna try and cut her off. Yeah, she went into main build in one of them. What I'm doing right now is I'm turning the TVs off. There we go. And Nancy can be killed. But if I was running the Iri Revolt, I would have seen that she was on that generator. And as such, I would have, like, forcefully not teleported onto that TV. Also, if you look at Lara right now, the third one from the bottom, she is a tape. If you look in a portrait, you can see, like, a little VHS thing. And if you look at the top two, they don't have that. Someone's here. We want to teleport on that, because we know that someone's working on this gen, because we heard him when we were doing the Nancy thing. Oh, I thought that was a window. And the only way to break a tape is to hook them. If you're looking up guides on Sadako, I'd be very careful, because she's been through like two or three iterations. We 
gonna stick Dragon's Grip on that, and we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait up here. So if she touches that gen there, she's begun she's gonna become exposed. She didn't touch it for some reason. We wanna get this one, because she has a tape. So the reason people say go for the ones with the tapes is because um, the only way to break the tape is to thing on them. Because that TV's on the second floor and it's very hard for her to turn it off, what we can do is we can teleport to the other TVs. To push stacks of condemn on her. There you go, she's no condemnable. Her TV's upstairs. So the plan here is to try and teleport on the TV as she's in certain tape. There is an infinite amount of tapes. As long as a TV is turned on, they can get a tape. Oh shit, I think she just got it off. She just went around the back of me. Yeah, she did. I played. So she just got the tape off. Because she got that off, she's lost three stacks. So seven stacks is when she was condemned. She's now at four. You, just, you basically just want to destroy it so they can't deposit it and reset that uh, their condemned stacks. She gave up. The only way for them to bring their condemned stacks down is by depositing tapes. So it's in your best interest to break the tapes so they can't do that. So obviously you can get the condemned kill. That should push a stack. Yep, it pushes a stack on Lara. There's one on... I thought there was one on this gen. I must have missed oh, the aura. There is one over here though, because we got a stat when we teleported before. Oh, she's over there. But you can you can also use the um, whether survivors are getting condemned stacks or not as a way to uh, try and pinpoint where they are. She's just grabbed the tape as I teleported on it. It was a bug. That tape's up there. What we're gonna do? We're gonna try and cut her off again. And that's why you want to keep them injured. Because if she was healthy, I would hit her there and she would just run and deposit the tape anyway. But because she was injured, I could just come out the TV, which would prevent her from putting the tape in, and then insta down her, and then kill her. So she didn't get a stack, so we know that she's not near these... Th Three TVs. That's the biggest tip I can give to anyone who's like learning Sadako. Keep people injured and interrupt them. Just try to get good at interrupting them as they're trying to grab or deposit a tape. We're just giving a hatch. But in general, what I will run is Eerie Remote, because with Eerie Remote, um, I can see where the people... It gives you a lot of info. Info is very important on Sadako, knowing where people are, so that you know what TVs to teleport to. Because what Eerie, Eerie Remote basically will throw... will show the aura of any survivor who gets a condemned stock. Nearly. 
the 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 radius in which it shows the aura is slightly slow uh, lower than the um the condemn radius but it's only 12 meters on irritate uh, in the area remote and it's 16 meters on the condemn push but it's very good because let's say someone grabbed the tape here and they and uh, the the tape is always the furthest away so um if they grab that tape their tape's going to be up there. The only time it won't do it is if two people grab a tape from that TV, their deposit TV can't be the same. But in general, if they grab a tape from like... So if they grab that tape and you've seen that they go over there, you know anytime someone grabs a tape from there, it's going to be over there. Yeah. They have to go to one TV and it's usually the furthest away. No, no. So that, that used to be how she works in 2.0 Sadako. That's not how she works anymore. How long it, it depended on how long you've been playing in the past year and a half, she's gone through six iterations, including the PTB ones. That's the problem. So, first iteration is what you used to think in a first iteration, you the survivor had to be near the TV you teleported onto in order to push condemn. The second iteration, if you teleported, anybody without a tape would grab a condemn stack and now. It's anybody stood near a TV. It doesn't matter if they're holding a tape or what. They just need to be within 16 meters of a TV. 